everyone advent of code day six this one was way harder than the last one i got to um pretty much ranked 7296 so sub 8000 and um got around 8000 here so still staying in like under doing the top 10k which i'm pretty happy about this is my first time doing advent of coding so these are new types of questions i've never seen um this one was definitely harder than the other ones um it was a graph question i went ahead and like i live stream all, all the times that i try to do these questions so you could see how i think about these questions and how i actually solve them from start to finish you could see here i literally wait till like in this live stream um you'll see me wait till the question actually drops and then you'll see me like diagram whiteboard everything until like i end up actually completing the question so also see how i debug but that's the live stream tune into the live streams whenever i do those i try to do them right at 9 p.m pacific time when these things drop and also a lot of people in my live stream were asking me if i could coach them and i can co i i do want to coach people who subscribe to me because just i, I just really appreciate my subscribers but I work a full-time job out in um, San Francisco and I don't just work a normal job too. I work like a early stage startup. So I have to also pretty much um, do my job. So I just can't, I can't take everyone. I wish I could take everyone and help coach them up to be really good at LeetCode, but I don't have um, too much time for that. So I have this um, giveaway where I'm giving $100 USD to five of my subscribers, um, $100 each. And then on top of that, I'm also going to be like coaching them and just helping them get better. So pretty much for each person who wins in this giveaway, and I'll throw the link of this giveaway in inside of the comments and also um, like, um, yeah, pretty much inside of my comments, uh, go to this, go to this specific video and this is what I'm giving away, $100 USD. I'll donate $25 of toys for your Christmas on your behalf. I'll give you personalized SWE coaching to help you like get better at lead code or whatever you're trying to do. Um, and then you'll get access to my Discord where I also have all my industry friends in there so you can talk to us. So that's what I'm doing. Um, another thing is follow my brother, John Peralta CFA. I have a video with him when I teach him how to lead code and I'm gonna be coaching him up for the next month as well. So. Anyways, let's just get straight into this. So this one was a lot harder. So this one was a lot harder than um, pretty much the other ones. Like you could see it took me two hours to do, but that's because my live stream actually was really popping. So it was pretty fun to um, just work on the question with everyone watching too. Uh, it's a lot of pressure, but um, yeah. So what's question one? Or what's part one of, of day six? So pretty much we're we're given this this um this map, right? And the map is of a specific like it's a map of just a lab, right? So in the year it turns out there's this lab and there's a security guard patrolling the lab and Pretty much, oops. Pretty much here. So we're given this map down here and I'll just drag this. Holy crap, I have a lot of stuff there. So we're given this map the hashtags, hashtag equals obstacle. And then we have um, this equals the um, security guard. So what it's basically saying is you're giving the map with the security guard patrolling. The security guard actually has some sort of direction or orientation. It could be facing like upwards, facing to the right, facing down or facing left. When it's facing upwards, the security guard guard follows a very particular pattern. They, they, they just walk straight 
in whatever direction they're facing. They walk straight in whatever, whatever direction they're facing. And the moment they hit an obstacle, they like turn 90 degrees and then keep walking straight. So they turn 90 degrees to the right, keep walking straight. Then they turn 90 degrees to the right, then keep walking straight. Right. Then they then they're walking downwards. They t hit they they hit an obstacle and they take a right. So they pretty much just turn ninety degrees and, and then keep walking straight until at some point. This is fun. At some point they leave the map, right? Once they leave the map, our job is to just figure out what distinct elements, or what distinct like how many distinct um cells in this in this grid that they actually um stepped over so start by making so they start the map shows the current position of the guard with a plus side indicate that the guard is facing upwards from the perspective of the map any obstructions are shown as obstacles like we just these are just obstacles and then like i said they follow a specific patrol protocol which is repeatedly walking up until they hit something otherwise like take a right like take turn a right degree or um turn right by 90 degrees and then keep walking forward that way so you could see um that's pretty much what's happening here i just drew it out fully and then pretty much at the end like i said we just need to like right here they did it in x's but i did it in green and we just need to return all the cells that they stepped on, right? All the distinct cells. So you could see here that um, at like this point right here, we actually walked over twice, but we only want to count that as one. So pretty much the code is take the input array, um, sorry. And I'm going to do this quick because this I already spent like three hours on this algorithm. Go up. So pretty much the algorithm is you need to maintain some sort of orientation or direction. So I have um, variables here, up, right, down, left, and I parse the input array. I take this input array and I parse it into a 2D grid. 2D matrix, right? So pretty much for every row, I extract the rows from the string. And then for every element inside the row, I grab the specific characters. So now I have a 2D array of characters. From there, I just print it. You can see I just print it, right? And now I do two things. I, the first part is I find the security's position and the orientation. Um, usually their orientation is just, you know it's gonna be up. So you just look for this specific element inside the, inside the grid and you return the security position. Then I have this helper function called turn right. And given the current direction, it'll tell you what the next direction is. So if I'm up, my next direction is right. If I'm right, um, if I'm facing right, like this, my next direction is is down. So that's what this this thing is doing. It's uh, it's just a helper for turning right. And then from there, um, what I do is I start. We start the we start the security guard at a specific position, and then we just pretty much just walk them. We just keep walking them until at some point they exit the array. So how we do that is, and also at the same time, we're maintaining a path. We're maintaining a path here. Um, basically, when we get the next position, so we have we know the current security guard's position. So um, where do we write that? And we know it's their orientation, which is, uh, where's their orientation? Security, which is, we know their row column, they're facing up. What we do essentially is we to get the next position, we take the input array and we take the security's position and then we also have the path. And then pretty much, 
this code is a little bit different than, than what I did. Um, I changed it up last minute to solve question two, but pretty much what you want to do is, um, let's just move this. Like when you know their direction during the while loop, you pretty much, oh, where's my old code? For try four directions, direction left. Yeah, this is this is this is my answer for question two. Um, let me think. Well, essentially, what we do is like we just keep um, moving. We to get the next position. If our orientation is up, we just do um, row minus one because we to get the next position, you pretty much keep the same column because these columns are zero, one, two three, et cetera, right? So pretend this is on, on row five. We pretty much want to keep, just subtract from the row, um, but keep the same column, which is two in this case. And you pretty much keep getting the next position until you hit a, um, until you hit a specific, what's it called? A block here. So pretend, where am I? If so, if my orientation is up, right, the next row in the next column will be like, um, yeah. Oh, I wish I had my old code, but I think everything holds true there. Pretty much, just just keep just maintain like a row and column and the direction, and then when you and then like have a while loop that loops until you hit an like have the condition of the while loop so that we exit the while loop when we leave when we leave um, the array and then basically based on your orientation to figure out the next cell to visit depends on what orientation so if your orientation is up the next cell should be row minus one and keep the same column that will that will help you move forward and um, Basically do two checks. If the next one, if like basically look at the next position, if the next position is out of bounds, then just quit. Like you've already hit, like you, you just um, exit the rate. If it equals a hashtag, call your function to, to, to um, look right, essentially this function, like turn the, turn the security guard, right? Cause we're just simulating. Then from there now, now that they're facing right, keep running the while loop. And then you'll have you'll have conditions in your big while loop for like whatever orientation they are. And depending on the orientation that they're in, we're going to have like a different um, like we're, we're going to like either subtract from the row or subtract from the column, depending on which way we want to move them. So if we want to move them to the right, we just increase the column by plus one, but leave the row the same. And I need to get my code from my brother and I'll post it. But that's essentially how you solve question one. Um, question two is a lot harder, or it was harder for me. But essentially, like the the big insight here for question one or question two is that let's see, let's do this. Pretty much. From part one, you're gonna know all of the different cells that this row, this security guard will follow um, before they exit, right? So now all you, all the question is asking is like, where can we put obstacles so that we throw the security guard in a loop, essentially, which is kind of interesting. Um, how you do that essentially is um, I tried to do a more optimal algorithm, but pretty literally just brute force it. So what you're going to want to do is cycle detection. So you're going to want to build like a, a cycle detection. And to, to do cycle detection, just store a path, store, store a path, which is a set of tuples where, which is pretty much a set of tuples where each element in this set is pretty much like the row and column and the orientation. Orientate, um, is the row, column and orientation. 
So you're going to have like, uh, um, you're going to store like all the different rows and orientation, like rows and columns you visited and the specific orientation. Um, you want to, you want to um, track like orientation as well, because the moment you see the same row, column and orientation, you know, you're in a loop. So for example, um, pretty much, pretty much since we know all of the different places that we're going to visit to solve part two, to brute force it, we're going to loop through every single one of these cells that, that, um, the row the, that the security guard would visit. And then we try at each point, adding an obstacle and then trying to do a cycle detection. So we'll add a obstacle here and then try to do a cycle detection, right? Um, we'll add a, one here and try to do a cycle detection, right? And then we'll do, we'll like literally add it in every single place and add a cycle detection. Um, we'll add one here. And then you'll notice that if you, if we add one here, it'll do a cycle detection. And why we care about tracking the orientation, pretend um, red is going up, um, blue is going right, orange is going down, and what else? I don't know. Red is red is going left, or green is going left. Cool. So we we pretty much try adding um obstacle in every every location. And why we want to care about the orientation is because like pretend it'll, it'll go down this path. It'll hit this new obstacle that we just added. And then it'll take a right. But the now we've seen that we've saw this row and column. What and we've went, already went up that path. So if we went up that path, we're gonna end up going back up that path again. Cause we know that if we go up that path, we eventually looped. So that you kinda have to do cycle detection by storing the row column column and orientation, and then pretty much just run the same algorithm from part one. So that's how you solve all the questions. Um, I need to get a hold of my code next time I'm going to push it to GitHub, but yeah, super late at night. It's two 23 for me. So hope you have a good rest of the night and good luck solving the problems. Um, this was a good, this, this was a good one today. Cool. See y'all in the next video.